Welcome to our latest virtual bridge session then. And today uh, I'm delighted that we're going to be covering the topic of supporting students. And, and this isn't something that we've covered up until now, but we'll certainly be paying more attention to it because it's an area that definitely needs more attention. So um, I'm delighted to be joined by Gwen Watt from Nescall today, all the way up in Fraserburgh. Hello. <laughs> um, so without further ado, Gwen, over to you and let us know What's been happening in Nescall over COVID? So good morning everybody. I'm Gwen Watt, the um, North East Scotland College. Um, I work at the Fraserburgh campus. Um, I've worked at Nescall since I was 18, so that's 23 years now. Um, and we've never faced challenges like COVID before, but I'd like to tell you a wee bit about how Nescall have responded. Okay, so, um, Lockdown um, for Nescall, I suppose, was announced on um, Tuesday, the 17th of March. Teaching was suspended at 9 a.m. Uh, buildings were open that week, however, and that allowed students and staff to prepare for the full closure to allow them to gather their belongings, anything they needed to work effectively at home. Um, Nescall are in a good place technologically because we run a BYOD programme, so that stands for Bring Your Own Device, and students generally in further education courses, many of our courses are supplied a laptop at the start of the year as part of their materials and that's funded through our bursary fund. So in that respect, we were quite lucky. Um, so at the start of lockdown, we wanted to create a brand to try and promote things on social media, to try and keep students engaged and that's where the Nescall at Home brand came from. Um, we wanted to keep key messages going out quite quickly around keeping connected the student advice and support team created a, a range of materials to go online to social media to keep students connected. These included topics such as health and wellbeing, uh, financial support. We put out specific messages for our care experience students. We showed students apps and websites that can support not only their studies, but their wellbeing. Our highest views for the social media campaign initially came from the setting up Skype, um, using Office 365, mental health and wellbeing. Um, some of our non-curriculum um, videos that were around being creative during lockdown, so those were quite popular. Um, naturally, financial worries, um, that post were quite popular too, so students were a bit worried about what was happening with their bursary, um, how to seek support, they'd been furloughed, and an etiquette tips. So those were our biggest sellers uh, with an school at home student advice and support team posts. So these sessions on these posts had seven times higher engagement than a normal um, social media post. So that was quite good. So moving on to support and students with their studies, academic tutors as normal were tasked with um, checking out engagement levels. So they had their own academic tutor groups. They had to check that they were logging on to our blackboard, making contact with their academic tutors and where they were, weren't they were asked to contact the student advice and support team and we would make contact. So we either phoned them at home, phoned their mobile or contacted them by email to make sure that one, that they were okay and two, they had the technology and they knew that it was kind of business as usual, albeit remotely. So our engagement figures from week one to week two of remote teaching at Fraserburgh campus increased by 300%. So these are all the students that we were contacting that had been identified as not engaging with our studies. And um, so we phoned them, we got them back on Blackboard, we ordered them a laptop or a dongle if they needed it to allow them to continue with their studies. So all appointments and engagements continued for day one, you know, face to face was suspended, but we used Teams, we used Skype, we use Blackboard Collaborate to continue with our study skills appointments, our needs assessments appointments. And um, we kept pushing on the Nesco at Home social media channels to let people know that we were here, we were happy to support. Um, we've delivered in-class support sessions uh, through Blackboard Collaborate and Teams. So we delivered sessions on employability and UCAS during lockdown the first few weeks. These were quite successful. Um, we delivered the presentation as normal. Students put comments or questions into the chat box. So we was happy with that. It's something that we plan to continue in 2021. We were worried, I suppose, about people being lonely. So people living on their own, people with no family or friends really in the local area, we were worried about them. So we set up tea with a tutor session. So 
these were collaborate sessions that students could sign up to and a member of the student advice and support team would be there um, and they could chat about anything. They could chat about the weather, they could chat about their studies, just something to kind of keep them from being lonely and he's some a friendly face to talk to. So engagement started off quite well. It kind of dropped off towards the end of term, but we, we expect that to continue early 2021. We will advertise it in the hope to keep people engaged and they feeling lonely. The only thing that kind of has dropped off, I suppose, is the mental health first aid support. So normally each week we are busy with mental health first aid support. That hasn't really happened at all. So we know that students still have mental health issues but we're just not sure where they're getting the support for if it's new for us. So we do have a job of work to try and identify how we can best support that um, in 2021. So needs assessments, alternative assessment arrangements, study skills, all moved to teams and collaborate. They've all continued. The engagement numbers are really high. So we're happy with that. During the Easter break, we identified that we were concerned that students might not come back to learn um, because of in the break, we're on lockdown, we're continuing in lockdown. But we also wanted to give the curriculum teams a chance to look at their courses, look at their assessments and consider how they were going to get their students through to the end of term. So we wanted to buy them some time. So we created the remote revolution. And the remote revolution was a two week program where students were um, brought a series of events and um, videos and sessions from the student advice and support team, for the funding team, for the library, for the sports staff, to keep them engaged, to keep them learning, but also to give the curriculum some time. So we're on a, a promotion on the remote revolution. So we focus on um, city support, financial support, mm -hmm. health and well-being. The Student Association ran their election campaign through the remote revolution, so that proved quite successful, allowing them to piggyback on. They were a bit concerned that they wouldn't get the same engagement in the elections, but they did. Um, there was also fun things like quizzes, uh, gardening tips, uh, recipes, and there was fitness sessions each day. We opened every day, we had this morning session, but instead of Holly and Phil, it was Stephen and Cara. And they introduced the day, they introduced the program. They also gave out any key messages that were important for that week or that day or deadlines that were approaching to let students know. So we were really happy with the um, engagement that we received. The feedback has been good. Um, I'm not sure if we will continue this in 2021. I suppose it depends on that COVID has in store for us. But it was a good way to keep students engaged, especially after the Easter break. The week of lockdown, Frisborough campus was due to have its open day and employer engagement evening. So that is a really important date for Frisborough campus. It allows students that we've been working with in the student advice and support team to speak to employers. We, we work with them throughout the academic year, getting their CV ready, making them confident speak to employers but it also lets us sell our courses. So without um, being postponed, it was a bit inconvenient. So we ran a virtual open day for Fraserburgh Campus during lockdown. We set up a web page. Um, it should just be opening. Yeah, we set up a web page. Myself um, is the coordinator for support on the curriculum managers um, created videos. Identifying ourselves, telling students what we do a bit about our, our courses a bit about the facilities and we were available um, during the virtual open evening there was a contact us button and students came straight through us with, with any questions or queries that they had. Our numbers were probably slightly less than a normal open day but our conversion rate from applicants to people who engaged and then our full applications was quite good. So it proved popular and we usually hold um, open nights in November who knows, they might be virtual as well. I suppose it depends what's in store for us next. So assessment and support, like all of you, assessment and support had to be uh, kind of modified. Um, inclusive wise, I suppose that the IT and things that were going on at home made things more inclusive. There was less need, I suppose, for some alternative assessment arrangements. Um, we did still provide some alternative arrangement support in the form of readers and prompts 
student assessments, but it, it, it reduced dramatically the, that requirement. So, um, IT. So, IT, oops, sorry. IT was still a problem for some students because, it, like I said, it's only some FE courses that were automatically eligible for BYOD at the start of term. So these are our IT kind of stats. Uh, 102 laptops were loaned out to students during lockdown and 36 4G dongles. But the really mind-blowing thing, I suppose, is the team's engagement. You can see that the, the increase in percent of you know, users and channels and messages and reactions is phenomenal, 3,500% increase. So Teams, Blackboard Collaborate, these things have all been pivotal to you know, our engagement with students. And obviously things that we will continue will be based on Teams and Blackboard Collaborate. Staff responded very well to uh, moving from face-to-face -to, -face to remote teaching like everybody, they didn't really have a choice, but um, they actively sought support in CPD training from our Digital Futures team. Um, the Digital Futures team have been pivotal in the success in adapting to um, effective online materials. Um, so we are using the Teams, the Blackboard Collaborate um, platforms to deliver sessions. We've also changed the way that we are doing our materials, I suppose. So we're using things like Powtoon, and Visme and um, Captasia and Rise to make the content more appealing and more accessible, I suppose, to online. So it's not just death by PowerPoint and too much words. We're trying to liven things up a bit, I suppose, and it's working well. So plans for 2021, we've had some time to prepare and be proactive as opposed to reactive like we were at the start of lockdown. Um, and it's, well, it depends on what next with the government guidance for us and what COVID-19 has in store for us. We are preparing to open our campuses on the 7th of September. With the current government guidance, it's with a two meter um, social distancing, we can hold approximately one third of our normal capacity. Priority will be given to our, you know, our more hands-on based courses, our learning opportunities courses. So for student advice and support, we are going to be the last in the building. So we will continue to provide support remotely. Um, our materials are updated and ready to go using the platforms that I just discussed. Um, we have captioned all our materials to make them accessible. We usually run a ready steady study program in the summer holidays, and that is designed for people that are maybe a bit nervous about coming to college. So, you know, our care experience students, some people with disabilities, some people that have been out of education for a long time. We run events to try and allay any fears they have about coming to college. So they get to do activities and they get to find out about, about the technology they will be using. They get a chance to speak to key staff and it just hopefully gives them the extended transition support that they need. We do intend to run this this summer, but we're running it remotely. Uh, we usually run it as two separate teams. So the Fraserburgh Campus team and the Aberdeen team this year, we're running it as a regional team. So that starts in July and there's sessions every week and through until the end of August. So the first one's next week. So we're looking forward to that. In November, we always hold a UCAS week, week and that allows our higher national students to plan for their university application. So we help them with sessions and workshops on personal statements, completing the application. We get in guest speakers from SAS, from the local universities. And again, we fully plan to continue this. We've been told that it won't be a face-to-face -face event. So again, it'll be a remote event. And we're looking forward to it. It'll be challenging, but we're looking forward to it. So um, highlights of lockdown has been uh, working together as a better regional team as opposed to two separate teams. And for us, the remote revolution was highly effective. We enjoyed doing the materials. It wasn't just study based. It was, um, you know, creative based and mindfulness. And we enjoyed doing stuff that we didn't really get the chance to do in a normal week. So that is us. That is Nest Call, I suppose, and uh, a snapshot of our lockdown. Um, this last final video if it plays is just our end of the remote revolution video it's near looking very promising actually
know, I'm, I'm really thinking it's liking it very much, but it was a, it was a video where I message saying thank you for being part of the remote revolution. You can still get in touch with us. The materials are still available. It is online if you want to have a look later on. And that is it for me. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thanks for that snapshot, Gwen. Um, now, just stealing a cue from Jason, who commonly hosts these sessions, I'm 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 going to pose a question first, uh, just because it's my prerogative. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm just wondering, with that switch to to now supporting staff online. And, and students online, sorry. So with, with students, how, how did they take to discussing issues um, online versus face-to-face? -face? Did you see any significant difference? Were people more hesitant to talk via video chat than they would be Yes, online? and I do think that that's possibly the reason that we've not had much mental health first aid emergencies because, you know, the hen I got the face-to-face. And you know, if you're in a mental health emergency, I suppose you don't want to be logging onto Teams and things like that. So I do think that we've got a job at work. Study skill support, no, I wouldn't say that, you know, if a student had a study skills appointment or a needs assessment or spoke about their alternative assessment arrangement, they were still quite open to the fact that, you know, they could still see somebody, they could still discuss their concerns. I wouldn't say that there was more hesitant. Our, our engagement figures, I suppose, were down slightly on, <coughs> excuse me, what they were, on campus, but I no, I didn't. I didn't think so. Certainly, with mental health, not so much with study support. Okay, um, Jason, I see has his hand up for a question. <laughs> can they always have my hand up for that. Thank you very much, Gwen. Um, can I ask about? Um, obviously, you've had students this year that have been familiar with the concepts of student support from being at the college, whereas next year you've got a bunch coming in new. Uh, how do you plan to tackle that? Have you come up with some good ideas? Yeah, we've got an enhanced induction. So that's what we're currently working on just now. So we have all, every, every team in the college is providing a video that kind of explains who they are, what they do. And um, so that is for part of the induction. But then after the induction, once they're enrolled, we do plan to do um, in, in class sessions where we will go over things in more detail and answer any class specific questions. It is going to be challenging. We are hoping that by doing it at the start of term, students consider it more normal as opposed to those students that were kind of thrown into it in March. So we're hopeful. We're hopeful that the enhanced induction, um, working more closely with the academic tutors, the academic tutors giving us time with each class will allow us to be more focused, um, allow students to put faces to names, I suppose, because they didn't really see anybody. <laughs> And uh, John, you have a question. Uh, hi, Gwen. A lot of the teaching areas report that, that uh, FE students, as opposed to HE students, they tended to lose more. There was less engagement at FE level than HE level. Uh, do you see any difference between the, the younger or the FE students okay, or the HE students? Uh, I would agree. I would agree that it was more FE students. So the ones that we did the most chasing with was the technical based courses, the ones that engin the engineering, the construction, the motor vehicle that just thought, well, I'm not in campus, so I can't, I can't do anything. And certainly there is cases at college where courses have been deferred until the we can get them on campus, but there is a lot of work that could have been done. So yeah, I would agree more FE than HE. We did chase them up, usually by four in the house, and their mom asking at help, asking why we was calling at help. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so we got there. We got there with the majority, but we did lose some, definitely. Okay. Um, any other questions? Um, Monica, Andrew, Sandy. I feel Can Sandy I would have a question. Quick one. Oh, yeah. Jason. If you don't mind, sorry. Um, there. Um, have you had evidence that obviously you cover a big geographic area, travel into the college isn't convenient for everyone. Uh, did you see some students reporting that the method of, you know, of engagement actually suited them and was a benefit? Yes, so certainly um, there's a lot of our students at Fraserburgh campus at least that are parents. So homeschooling, if, if we didn't lock down, we would have lost those students because they didn't have the childcare. So certainly it did prove beneficial for students with childcare issues, with stu students with caring responsibility, elderly parents, uh, those working in the NHS and care homes that had extra shifts to cover. 
if we hadn't locked down, we would have lost them. So it certainly did benefit some students. And Andrew, you had a question. Just going to ask um, if you're okay to share the information. Have you seen a drop off for next year of people signing up um, to come to the college on the HE side? They're seeing a, a sort of fairly steady uh, rate of numbers and not a huge drop off that they're expecting. I was wondering if you saw the, the same on the FE side. Um, FE, aye. Our numbers are down generally. Aye. Absolutely. I think there's a nervousness about coming to college and fit to expect. Um, I know for my own son, he's supposed to be going to university next year, but he's decided to come to NESCO and do a one plus three because we're offering some face-to-face -face teaching and the university beside us is, you know, they're kind of saying that there's not going to be any face-to-face -face teaching. So I think there is a nervousness. I hope that the deficit will be reduced when the exam results come out and people start thinking a bit more about their next steps but yeah same as everybody else our numbers are down i think it's just a nervousness about next steps and yeah. you know nobody folk come to college for the social aspect and if they're being told that there's no that social aspect i suppose it is off putting are, are you do do you think you'll put anything in place to kind of increase that social aspect something that you can promote to to try and allay those fears. I know in your talk, you talked about a lot of the, the, the stuff that you're doing now, especially around mental health and things, but I, I'm meaning more in a kind of general meet your peers and, and so on. Yeah, so there is going to be like induction sessions where academic tutors for the whole class will be expected to, which is fine if you're signed up, but if you're not signed up, I, I would say we've got a job at work. The ready study study sessions are good for that because they're not quite enrolled and they might hear nervousness. So they can meet other people that's kind of like-minded and nervous. But again, we need to get the application first. So I, I would say, I, I would reckon you're right. There is a variety of work streams ongoing with people focusing on different things. One of them's applications. And that's certainly something that the applications work stream will be looking at is offering some sort of social aspect because it's the main sale of college, isn't it? So, uh, Sandy, sorry. Oh no, hi, hi Gwen, that was great. Um, no, it's just an observation thinking about that engagement. Um, are you linking in with the um, student associations? Because that's, um, they're also um, looking at how to engage and create a sort of social virtual community. Yeah, so um, our team has uh, met with the student association just this week um, to try and tie up our calendars to try and I suppose jointly promote events and tie them up, up as closely together to try and mark them more sellable to, la, to a wider audience because usually every team is kind of you know everybody focuses on their own job but we're trying to create a more cohesive approach to try and reach out to more people and encourage more people to get support either for us or for the student association or for the academic tutor so events are um tied together this year to try and promote um the mere social aspect i suppose yeah I think I think that's right about the social aspect and and the difficulty is that when lockdown happened a lot of people had groups of friends that they'd established mm -hmm. when they'd already started college and it's this idea of people coming into college for the first time yeah. how do you how do you meet new people and you start that social conversation that, that that's a difficult one I, I'm <laughs> so as as soon as you find that silver bullet you know just pass it on <laughs> um, <laughs> but um, um, a lot of colleges in previous virtual bridge sessions reported that there was around about maybe 25%, a third of, of students kind of lost engagement with, with the course and, and essentially didn't start attending some of the sessions or, or, or keeping up with work. And, and I know you said you, you reached out to people, you, you phoned them, <laughs> talked to their parents, etc. Do, do you have any particular tips about how do you keep people engaged with a course, especially going forward into the next term? Do you have any ideas about how, if they're not coming into college every day or every other day? Any ideas about how to keep them on track? I think, I hope it'll be better next term because like I'm saying, we've got a chance to react um, to the situation and prepare. So the materials should be more engaging. Um, the expectations will be set at the start of term so people kind of know what they're signing up for. You know, nobody signed up for remote learning in 1920, but they are signing up for it in 2021. So we're hoping that um, you know, that helps. Good relationships with the curriculum and the support teams are pivotal, I suppose. And, you know, communication is pivotal. If somebody's not engaging with an academic tutor, the support team might hear more success because it's somebody out with. 
So yes, it worked. Yes, we didn't uh, manage to reach everybody, but I just hope that, you know, with the expectations being set early on, that the curriculum team and the support team working together, that we can keep engaging with the students, you know, phone and home, phone on their mobiles, texting them, asking if they need support, because it will be challenging for students. Um, but hopefully we've got the right tools and we're better prepared, I suppose, for 2021. And, and to that, then, when you talk about Nescol is slightly different from other colleges in that it has a pretty advanced BYOD, bring your own device um, policy in place and a lot of support. Um, student desks that help with technical support around uh, students who have their own devices, etc. Are with that kind of expectation in place for 2021, are you telling students that it's going to be a requirement that they have a laptop or a device and connectivity? to carry out their course next year. Is there any guidance around that? No, the BYOD programme, to, to the best of my knowledge, isn't being extended. So it will just be the courses that it always is. Um, that we will still loan out laptops. We've taken back the laptops that we loaned last year. We're hoping to have more in place to support students for the start. So um, no, it cannot be a requirement because that's not very inclusive because not everybody can afford a laptop if they're in a chosen a course that's BYOD, but we will support them. Okay. Um, any, oh, Monica. Uh, yeah, um, it was just a couple of things. Probably just before I, I ask Gwen, just a couple of wee things to say, just for interest. We are planning over the first two weeks, the induction two weeks before we start our online learning, to bring all our students into the buildings in very small groups on a rota, so that they do get to meet some other people in their class and they do get to meet their tutor and they do get that feeling of being part of the college. But it's a logistical nightmare, but that, that is the plan <laughs> at the moment. So that was just for interest. And just, Gwen, just, just a couple of things. I, want, I wanted to just find out about the laptops through bursary funding, sort of how, what proportion of students is it that, that, that you're able to do that for? Because it's obviously something that we're all looking at. And the other one was just to ask if you do counselling online. I mean, you said your mental health sort of um, referrals and engagement had dropped off. I just wondered if you had a counselling service and if that had moved to online to support those learners. Yeah, so um, the BYOD scheme, it's it's near every course, so it doesn't tend to be the technical courses, the, the, the engineering, the motor vehicle, the welding, the computing courses, they are not BYD, believe it or not, because they've got the specialist computers and the computing lab. Um, but ESOL, hairdressing, uh, professional cookery, sport and fitness. Uh, okay. Most of the creative service industry are BYOD. Okay. So um, those aged between 16 and 18 automatically qualify. So they, there's no expectation in them to purchase their laptop. Those over 18 is means tested. So if they don't qualify for the materials element of the bursary, they would be expected to buy their own. Okay. I, it's near my area of expertise. No, so no, that was just enough a information feel. for you. Um, with regards to mental health, um, we launched the Big White Wall during lockdown and the counselling service through that will be available at day one, 2021. Okay. So students can sign up to that, but it was not available till now. So the students can have been going there for the mental health support. Okay. Okay. Um, we have time for one last question. Is this part of the, the recorded session? Um, does anyone have a, a, a question? Otherwise, I have to ask something. And nobody wants to listen to me more. I mean, that's... <laughs> Okay, so um, in, in terms of student support, is there, is there anything that changed significantly as a result of supporting remotely that you missed from the face-to-face -face experience? Is there anything that you could do face-to-face -face that you just could not do remotely, Gwen, um, in, in terms of supporting the students at NESCO? I would say no. Okay. I would say that we've found a wider and everything. It's just disappointing about the mental health, the reaching out not happening. So I would like to see that improve, but we can still provide it. Okay. And well, in, in that case... I home as well. I do miss my colleagues sometimes, and I do miss the cost of coffee, <laughs> but I can work from home quite effectively. In that case, um, just adding to that then, is there anything that you've taken from this, this period of lockdown and this remote support that you'd want to carry forward into a time without lockdown? 
Uh, is there anything that adds value to the support services? I think, you know, like I said, we've been time to work together better as a regional team. So it was very, it wasn't fragmented. It was, you know, we followed the same policies and procedures, but it was very much two separate campuses and two separate, I suppose, ways of doing things. We've managed to find time to support each other and we have got a very good cohesive approach to student advice and support. So I would like to see that continue and it will continue. Our events are all tied up and married together and it's just been good to hear the time, I suppose, to to produce better materials, produce better ways of doing things, and that will continue. Excellent. Well, on that positive note, if you're watching us during the recording, uh, that's all we have time for. But hopefully we may see you uh, in person in, in, in a live session. But until then, um, please stay safe and thanks for joining.